everyone, Ashley here for Scrap It Do Crafts, and this is part two of our National Scrapbooking Day, not really a day, kind of weekend event hosted by uh, Miss Barry and Carol over at Scrap It Do Crafts. Um, we had three fabulous uh, designers broadcast yesterday with a, a huge range of different projects, and today we are going to play with uh, the Fuse this beauty right here and also make some pocket pal letters which are just a huge hit with um just basically everybody but we have got a specific page where it's really um it's a pocket pal page where you guys can go and um, you'll have to um, request to be a member and we'll accept you and you can find people to swap let swap with so it's like pen pals but for crafters, okay? So that's kind of where, that's how I explain, how I explain pocket pals. So let's see, let's do our usual because I can't not. So let's say hi to our moderators, Miss Carol, Miss Heather, and Miss Margaret Ann. Um, I'm sure Janie's in there somewhere. <laughs> she usually is, I can't see her on the list though. Um, Let's welcome Miss Amanda, Anna Claudia, Army, Auntie, Barry, BG Oliver, B Blissful Crafter, Bunny C, Cherie, Cindy Lou, S Ella, Crafty, DGTR, oh, Ditter, Dolphin Girl, Eileen, Fran, Glowflow, Legomorph, Linda Rice, Lisa Marie, L Nails, Midnight Scrapper, Miss Linda Oklahoma, there's Janny, Miss Janny herself, Picture, Renee, Sheila in Michigan, uh, Susan Drexler, and a whole host of you streamers with really long numbers. Welcome, welcome. Feel free if you have questions, just hang out, chat with the girls, craft along. Um, I will try and catch questions in the chat. Um, a couple rules for the giveaways. Um, if you've already won a giveaway, we would like for um, other people to have a chance to win. Um, so the rules are you will be giving numbers probably 1 through 75. You can choose one number and one only. You can only post it after you see Carol post the word go in chat. Okay, and then after she posts stop, it's over. So you get one chance with one set of numbers um, and you must wait till you see the word go. Also for our international customers um, you will win a $50 gift card to the store. Um, for, the, for our US customers um, there will be two prizes given. The first prize is the where is it? Oh, okay. The first prize, number one prize, will be the Fuse tool. Okay, so the number's in this little fancy envelope. And then the second prize will be a mystery box. Now, when I'm drawing for either one of these, if you happen to be an international customer, you will automatically win a $50 gift card to the store. So I hope that those are clear. If you have any questions on the rules, go ahead and... Um, find a moderator and ask. Okay. So here's our things and we'll do these sporadically throughout today's regular scheduled program. <laughs> Always wanted to say that. Okay. So first off, I'm going to show you guys some paper lines and then we're going to get into the fuse and get going. So the first paper line that I have that I'm going to be using pieces of. Both of them are Marion Smith paper lines because I just love her paper lines. And this one is Junk Gypsy. And let me grab my um, autofocus controls because it is going to go bonkers. Hold on. Oh, slow computer.
Okay, so this is Junk Gypsy by Marion Smith, and they have got these um, in the store now. It is a gorgeous line. I have multiples of all of her paper lines that she's come out with, including the Romance Novel 1 that she designed for Prima. So I'm a very vintage, shabby chic kind of girl. Hey, Wendy, if Wendy's here, Wendy. Um, anyways, Wendy loves owls. <laughs> Anyhow, so there's this paper line right here, and this is Shang Shangri-La. Okay. This one is Carpe Diem, and I love this, the little story, and then the butterfly sporadically out throughout this. And on the other side, again... These beautiful, beautiful cut aparts. This one right here is one of my favorites. It's going to get fuzzy. The mermaids and then the palm. Love it. Some nice leaves. This one's Bella V. San Suchi. And more cut aparts. I love her cut aparts. This just does it for me. It's this darn cut aparts. Because you can put them with anything. All the paper lines I have are typically vintage. More cut aparts. On this side. And again, you could cut this apart quite easily. And this back side here. It's just beautiful paper. This one. And I didn't even show the other side. Right, let's show the other side. And then this one's called Faux Pas. The other ones were uh, Carte Blanche. Carta Blanche, Carta Blanche, <laughs> Carte Blanche. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? These people. <laughs> oh, and more cut aparts here. Okay, so that's Junk Gypsy. There's two of each sheet. I just pulled out one of each sheet. And then this one, oh, my other brand new favorite. I saw these at CHA and I freaked out. Um, this one's Timekeeper. This one's called Carnival and great, great cut aparts. Look at this. And then this side, love this side. I didn't separate this one. Antique Emporium. back and the back is not it's not a black it's a very dark bluish black with the yellow so it's very very beautiful this one is called tinker oh, I set the paper on fire there cut apart this one will make a like a pocket envelope with a flap with this a steampunk journal journey so hint hints very good for journals <laughs> this one's called merchant art nouveau again really pretty cut aparts this one's called cogs and gears I love this one it's like a sheet of metal but not shiny got the little rivets in it and everything there's your cogs and gears this 
So this paper, in my opinion, can be a very manly paper without it being manly. It can go both ways. Exploration? No. Exploratorium. <laughs> I love it how you see a word and you just jump on it and it's not actually the word. Love these cut aparts. Look at those ones. Oh, that was this I've already seen that one. And then this one. Portfolio. More cut apart stuff. Those. And then the black back. So those are the two paper lines that we're going to play with today because pocket pal letters are supposed to be a representation of you. And I am very antique, shabby, chic. I love vintage anything. And so that's what I'm going to stick with today. So, okay. So now that you've seen the papers that we're going to work with, we're going to do some playing around with a few. So now you can use a glass mat. I have found that um, you just need a heat resistant mat or um, like I have a self healing mat. It's done okay on that. There are a few marks here that won't ever repair themselves. And um, I've been able to just do it on top of cardstock, ironically enough. <laughs> so, um, a couple different things we're going to, I'm going to teach you guys what the tool means or the different parts of the tool means. Um, it's different things that it does. It fused this little pocket on top of this little pocket. Um, this one um, fused together, but it, I also created a slit so you can take it in and out, but it is two different pieces out of one. Okay. So we're going to do a whole bunch of fun, good things. So let's go ahead and yes, this glass mat is an EK mat and I picked that up in store. I dusted off slightly. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be using our, um, the, both of those paper lines. Also the waterfall photo sleeves from We Are Memory Keeper. These things are adorable and these are great to one, create waterfalls, which you can do, or you can just individually put them over each, you know, pocket or whatever you're doing. These are fabulous because like, I don't have kids of my own, but I have dogs. And when they were puppies, like their first haircut hair, I saved it. I eat Actually, this might sound weird to some people, but I actually have like their bandana and all of their medical stuff and, and, um, I have a first tooth from both of them. So when I go to scrapbook their page, I'm going to use these to adhere to the things so that way I can keep it with the scrapbook page. Okay. Because everybody always has these things that they want to include in their scrapbook page, but they don't seal up at all. <laughs> and it's kind of frustrating. Things fall out. So this is a solution to that. So a little bit about your fuse. It'll come with a, a couple different things. It's going to come with one, the tool. Here's the fuse. And I have mine plugged in, so I can't do a lot with showing it. So it's really hot. Okay. Um, it comes with a stand. I also have got a silicone mat that I just set it on. Um, it's the one that holds my, oh geez, hold on one sec. Another use for your hobby holsters. So it's right on my desk and I set it right on this. Okay. So it's just sitting right there hanging out. Ouch. Totally just burnt myself on purpose. Wasn't smart, Ash. Okay. So I, I just, you don't need the silicone mat because it's got its stand, but I put it there just in case. Okay. Um, you get the silicone mat doesn't come with it. You need to get that separately, but I use it. There's a ruler 
It's a ruler with your guide down the middle. It's got some, so it doesn't slide anywhere. See, it's nice and stable. Got some like rubber feet. We'll call it rubber feet. Okay. Um, you've got two different blades. This one is, um, for all intents and purposes, a cutting blade. Let's see if it gives us a technical name. Oh, cutting tip. So I was close. It's not a blade. It's a cutting tip, okay? It's just a little pointy tip. And then you've got your fusing tip right here. It looks like a, a spiky pizza cutter on the small scale, okay? So that's all that comes with it and your packaging. And the instructions are in the inside. So some tips and tricks. Let's go over those first. Let the photo sleeve fuse cool for 30 minutes before removing tips with hands or storing. Now you're like, well, I have to wait 30 minutes to change the tip. No, you don't. Okay. The next tip that it gives you, you can use needle nose pliers to remove and add tips while it's still hot. Okay. So you're just going to grab your tip and turn the tool. Pull it off and set it on your silicone mat. Set it on your table. It's hot. Okay, and then you would grab your other tip and insert it. Just like so. Okay, I need the other tip so I'm not going to put it in all the way. Okay, what you're going to do when you do this is you fuse the seams around all photos and cards and then you cut, which I'll show you in one of the steps. Um, when you're place, when you are adding waterfall sleeves, you need to place paper under um, the top two sleeve layers to avoid fusing um, the bottom sleeve layer together. Um, you can fuse the sleeves to contain small keepsakes. And you can also use this photo fuse freehand, um, like I did just a little bit here, and created um, kind of a swirl between these two pockets. Let me. And so it's not a straight line. Hold on. It's going to get blurry. You can see there that it's not a straight line. I made kind of a squiggle between the two sequin pockets. Okay. And at the bottom it says, um, do not leave the photo fuse sleeve or the photo sleeve fuse in direct contact with the photo sleeve material for more than a few seconds. And it is recommended to use a glass cutting mat or other heat solid tolerable services. So those are your directions. Okay. And it says when you go to heat up your photo fuse to let it heat up for 10 minutes before use, that is mandatory. I was like, I plugged it in my very first go and I was like, oh, you know, just a couple of minutes, no big deal. And no, you need to wait the 10 minutes. I, I mean, if you want to wait nine and a half minutes, live like a rebel, go for it but you need to at least give it some time to heat up properly. Okay. I need a mint. <laughs> I need something. Okay. So we're and it works on these. These are baseball sleeves. Um, and it works on these just fine. So we're going to go ahead and use these. So as you can see here, I have adhered a little pocket above one of the other pockets. Let me see if I find something to slide in here. Probably not. Just so you guys can see. Okay, two different pockets. And then this one I was explaining earlier. So you could do two different um, pattern papers, cut it at width, and then cut it directly in half if you wanted to do a diagonal pocket. No, mine did not smoke or smell at first. 
So, I, and that's not to say that they don't. We would probably have to look on We Are Memory Keeper site. Um, they have advice for most of their tools. Um, I think they have a, a general chat where people can ask questions um, related to their tools. But mine did not. No, it did not. Okay. This would be really cool if you were pocket palling with a whole bunch of other people and you could totally like seal things in the pockets on purpose that had fuses and they'd have to unseal the pockets just to get it out. <laughs> Carol, that's how yours is coming. <laughs> so, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. This is my little test piece. I also cut this one off with the fuse, this corner one, so I, we could cut off a whole side. If you decide you don't want to send nine squares and you want to be, again, a rebel and send only six, you can cut off an entire row, okay? And let me put a piece of brown cardstock underneath my glass mat so you guys can see my paper. There we go. Any questions before we get going? Okay, so first let's let's go ahead and I'm going to actually I have the cutting one on here so let's go ahead and use that because it's heated up. Let me tighten it on. It's hot. This is very hot. Hot people. This will burn you. So be very careful. Okay. So it's on there and you can use it has this little slit for your thing but I find that it's hard for me to see. So where I want to cut, I just line up the edge, okay, and I hold it down, and then I apply some pressure. So you spend more time with your cutting part in the plastic than you do with the rotary one. The rotary one, you don't want to sit on it for very long, okay? You see how that cut that right away, all right? So let's go ahead and cut the top off because, I mean, you could also just leave these ones kind of flapping in the wind. That's kind of hot. Love that. New style. Line it up. And we're going to go ahead and just slide. I like using the outside of the ruler particularly. And it is ironic that this ruler, I gotta go slower. So when you're cutting, you gotta go slower. I totally forgot. I got all excited. There we go. All right, so here's our little pocket, to which you could then, you know, fuse on top of another if you seriously wanted to, okay? But also, So that, that's, well, I'm so excited about this that I just thought of and I want to do it. Okay, so that's cutting it off. We've cut off a pocket, all right? Next, let's go ahead and switch out our tips because I need a specific tip for this to the other one. I'm just going to let this untwist. Put it on your silicone mat. Don't forget that part. They do take a hot second to cool down. And I would make sure that you're using the pliers to put them in. Just because it hasn't been in it doesn't mean it's not going to get hot really fast. See, that's already getting hot. Especially if you're plug if it's plugged in when you do this. Okay. So this is like our... No. Well, it did seal this one side because I cut it after the perforation. So I went really slow with this one side, but I didn't go as slow with the top side. So technically, yes, because here's the perforation right here from where I cut it. So technically, this one would be open. So the slower you go, it seals it as it goes. Um, if you go a little bit faster, it just cuts it off. Like this one, remember how I was like, ooh, and it didn't cut off? It's because I was like totally going fast. So yeah, it did seal it. 
and cut it. Okay. So I want to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you guys how to do this diagonal one. So what you're going to do first is always seal the pockets that you want to put your shapes in. I'm going to do the two triangles here. Okay. And I'm going to go from corner to corner. Here, we'll go this way. Give ourselves some depth. Okay. With this one, you are not going to want to sit on this plastic very long. Okay. Like seriously, don't sit on it very long. Okay, and you can even use the little slip, but like I said, I like using the side. Now you're just going to roll right along the side. Okay, and it gives you a nice seal. Okay, I can't get my finger through there. So now this pocket's like totally sealed off from everything and you're like, well, what the heck? But I did that wrong. Because before you do this, <laughs> I forgot. We'll do another one. You need to cut your paper to two and a half wide by, I'm doing three and a half tall. Okay. And then I'm cutting it diagonally corner to corner. I did that wrong. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so this is my paper cut in half. We'll do it up here. I'll do it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bottom one in there, just like so. And then I'm going to seal it. I need to seal it in because you need that paper to be there to cut it open. If you cut it open, you run a risk of cutting the back of it and you don't want to cut the back of it. You only want one opening. Okay. So put your bottom piece in, set your top piece aside, grab your ruler. Now I got to do this upside down so I can see, put it right along the edge of the white piece, just like so. Okay. Make sure you're not seeing any of the white because you don't, you want it to seal. And then we're going to roll. Okay. Just like so. Okay. Now our piece is officially in there and we're like, oh my goodness, <laughs> I can't ever get it out. I'm going to show you how to get it out. Okay, so here's our top piece. So let's go ahead and get this bottom piece out. For that, you're going to need to change your tips. A tiny bit. Okay. Doing good. And you're going to need to give it a second to heat up. You don't want it to be dull. So it's been sitting out and I need it to heat up. Yeah, it needs to heat up. So we're going to give it a couple minutes. Okay. You don't have to give it the full 10, but you do need to give it a few minutes. The tool itself is already heated up. And so is the barrel. You just need to heat up the actual tip, which that does not take very long at all. So now that we've got some music in our heads, I'm going to um, show you guys while we wait for that to heat up some of the things that I've pulled out um, to embellish my pockets with. Uh, we've got some little flowers here. These are timeless memories. We've got some of the archivist flowers, um, and some wood icons. Might as well throw those in. It's the one thing I, the Mary Smith doesn't come with embellishments, so it's kind of it's annoying. But I'm just out of my own stash. Not all of these things are going to be in store, but look, you know, what you got. Um, we've got some wood tickets here. I found some Prima butterflies that will go beautifully with the, them. Um, these are the Bella Rouge wood icons that I have left over from the Bella Rouge collection. Um, we've got some enamel dots that I can just cut little sections off of and put them in pockets. Those are always fun. Um, I've got my sequins and 
I've got some this one's going to Carol. It says, if the broom fits, I'm a good witch. We always say we're going to hop on our brooms and be right over. Um, just some more random stamps. This one should be a, a Margaret Ann one. And a Miss Wendy one. <laughs> so, I've got a few others here. Also, I've got some just random really cute paper clips. So just some things that are going to go in here. I have some of these punches. I just grabbed a couple of punches, little things that this is a little tag punch that would fit hopefully in there. Beautiful. I never actually measured it. Oh yes. So you could do your leftover scraps with some of these tags. Okay. Um, this isn't always a hot commodity, so why not punch a few of those for your friends? So I'm going to punch a few of those. And washi, of course, I've got my bag of washi. So I've got a few, you know, tricks. Also, I'm going to be putting in some teas. My favorite tea is a mint tea. Let me actually grab that real quick while that heats up. Just one second, guys. Okay, so mine is an organic mint herbal tea that I absolutely love. These are good to put in a little cup of tea on me kind of situation. Also, seed beads are very fun. And I say seed beads because they're typically small. They won't add bulk to your envelope. You still want to be able to mail this in a number 10 envelope. Um, so I've got some seed beads here of all kinds of colors and sequins um, that wouldn't add a lot of bulk. So that's a, a good idea to use as well. So, okay, so that's ready. So let's go ahead and continue. So what you're going to want to do now is do not go right up to the seam, but close enough to where you can cut a slit. And remember, your paper has to be in there because then you won't cut the back. So this is nice and hot. And you're going to give it some steady pressure. Nice and slow, but not too slow. You'll figure this out after you've ruined a few pockets. I say grab one of them and test first. And if you find that that was just, oh, no, it worked. You can always go right back over the line without any repercussions. Just to lift it up. Okay. So now it is a removable piece. There we go. Ta-da! Okay. Also, a couple different things. If you want to seal off pockets, let's go ahead and let's put a, some seed beads in there. I keep dumping my sequins in. I'm going to show you guys how to seal off pockets real quick, like, and then we'll get going. Well, no, we have to do the flap too. All right. beads in there. Just for show. Okay. Let's go ahead and change our tip as well. 
because we're going to be sealing a pocket. So we need a different tip. I'll have to let that one heat up. But we won't be using this one really for the rest of because I'm not going to do this to my pockets. I'm really just going to be sealing and adding pockets to my pocket pal things. So. Okay, let's let heat up for just a second and we'll fuse this together and then we are going to add a flap over it just because. So let me grab a flap. So these are the little tiny flaps that come in the um, We Are Memory Keepers waterfall photo sleeves. Okay. Oh yeah, don't let them spill out. Well, that's why it would be great to put all of your little seed beads and stuff in here. I'm just gonna seal this so you guys can see what we're working with here. And we'll do a little design on this one. All right, so this is more than likely sealed. And you can freehand it, you don't have to use the ruler. It's completely up to you and what you would like to do. Hopefully that's sealed because I'm about to tip it upside down. We're about to find out. See? There are no seed beads coming out the top of that. Okay? So it's nice and sealed in there. So just a few little things that you can do with your pockets. So let's go ahead and we'll adhere this pocket on. Let me cut some of this down. Okay, so when you're putting the pockets on, and I'm just putting that in there for reference, um, you're going to want to Put it on there just like so. Okay, and you would start with your, I think they're telling you you would start with your bottom. I always start with my top, but I'm just going to freehand this and just roll it right on there. Now, if you use the ruler, it does also keep the plastic nice and straight. Okay, so now our pocket flap is on there. Okay. And you can just lift it up and put your next one down and your next one down and your next one down, whatever you want to do with these. Okay. Which we will do a waterfall on the actual pocket that we're going to do. I just don't want to waste any more of the little pocket sleeves. Any questions on any of the stuff that we went over? Also, um, to get your swirl, I just I did this one freehand, but I did just realize that this has a beautiful, nice curve to it. So I don't see any reason why you can't use this side of your ruler as well. Let's see what happens. Perfect. One pocket. Smaller pocket. <laughs> My fingers are too big to get in this. Okay. So here's our pockets. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to set this one aside since there are no questions and let's make a, um, a pocket. Let me grab another one. And I'm going to actually set some of this aside for right now because I'm going to get my paper ready and lay things out where I want it to go before I actually need to fuse on things. And I'm really just going to be fusing on the waterfall pages with little things sealed inside. So I've got my little baseball card sleeve. 
got the paper line I want to use. I have also pre-cut some of the pieces and cut aparts. This one is the Junk Gypsy collection. If you want to put twice twine. I'm just reading. Oh, nice. Junior just won at Talladega. That's kind of awesome. Okay. So let's go through here. I'm also going to use walnut ink. Of course. Because <laughs> I'm me. Um, and actually, I'm going to also stop the recording and restart it because we are right about the time where it kicks off. So that first video will be, um, well, I'll title it Fuse How To. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording. I will be right back with our, our part two. So if you're watching the recording, go to part two where we actually make a pocket page using the Fuse.